Good morning, chemistry students. These are your notes for Chapter 8, Section 2 on Single Replacement Reactions. Before we get started, just to sort of review what we've talked about so far. Remember in Section 1, you learned how to write and balance chemical equations. Again, you're going to start with a sentence. From your sentence, you're going to write your word equation. The purpose of that is to get rid of extra information. The only symbols in a word equation are plus signs and arrows. From your word equation, the next thing you write is a skeleton equation. In your skeleton equation, everything uses symbols. So elements become element symbols. Compounds, both ionic and molecular, become properly written molecular and ionic compound formulas. So formula units and molecular formulas. From there, now that you have your skeleton equation, you have to balance your chemical equation using coefficients in front of your formulas. You're making sure that your balanced chemical equation follows the law of conservation of mass, which says that the total number of every element of atoms on the reactant side has to equal the same number of elements of that atom on the product side of the reaction. So that was section one. So far in section two, we've talked about two of the five types of chemical reactions already. The first type of reaction we talked about was a combination or synthesis reaction. Remember, in a combination or synthesis reaction, we have two reactants and they become one product. Typically, you're not asked to predict the products of that unless it's like a metal and a non-metal reacting and they produce an ionic compound. Our second kind of reaction we talked about was decomposition reactions. We're going to know a reaction is a decomposition reaction because we have a single compound and our products are two or more um, products, oftentimes elements, but it could be an element in a compound or compounds. Again, typically you're not going to be asked to predict the products of decomposition reactions because it's hard to predict. The only time you might be asked to do that is if it's a um, compound made up of only two elements and that compound just decomposes into its elements. So that brings us to our third type of chemical reaction that we're going to talk about, which is a single replacement reaction. Remember, you were introduced to these reactions on ChemQuest 35, the intro to chemical reactions. So we're going to start with, again, as always, our definition of what a single replacement reaction is. You'll also see here that I have single displacement. Again, I have both of these terms because depending, many of you are going to take a college level chemistry class, and you might have a chemistry professor who calls it a single replacement reaction. You might have a chemistry professor who calls it a single displacement reaction. They are the same thing. It's two different words used to describe the same type of reaction. So um, our definition of a single replacement or single displacement reaction is atoms, of one element replace the atoms of a second element In a compound. Now on that chem quest you guys did and that we went over, we talked about the fact that we couldn't put two metals together because they were two metals because they both have positive charges. Okay. We also can't put two non-metals together because they both are non-metals and they both would have negative charges. Okay, so remember when we put um, elements together, um, we want to make sure that if we're having a compound um, that it is made, especially if it's an ionic compound, it's made of a metal and a non-metal. 
So as always, we're going to talk about the reactants and the products. Again, the purpose of this is to help you with this idea that if you had a bunch of chemical reactions and you had to identify them as the type, what would you look for to know that it's a single replacement reaction? First off, we want to talk about how many reactants are we going to have? Hopefully you're able to answer that. Yes, you're going to always have two. So single replacement reactions will always have two reactants. And it's very specific about what those reactants are. If you look up at our definition, we have an element replacing the atoms from the second element in a compound. Okay, so our reactants are always one element and one compound. Now, our products. Again, we are always going to have two. And they are still going to be one element and one compound. Now, they won't be the same element and compound, okay? When we talked about it a little bit on the ChemQuest, we talked about an element kind of replacing another element in the compound, okay? So they're not the same element and compound as the reactants. They're different elements and compounds in the reactants and the products because bonds have broken and new bonds have formed. For single replacement reactions, you must be able to predict the product, okay? Um, so we're going to kind of talk about a dating example or a dancing example, okay? And we'll kind of imagine it as dancing. So again, you'll kind of have to picture this. So imagine that we have a couple dancing. Um, maybe it is Austin and Jenna. And Austin and Jenna are maybe at the snowball dance or at prom and they're dancing together. And we have John and he has been watching this couple, Austin and Jenna, dance. And he really would like to dance with Jenna. So he comes up and because he's bigger and stronger than Austin, sorry Austin if you don't agree, um, but because he's bigger and stronger than Austin, and maybe because he's a little bit of a smooth talker, I'm not quite sure, but throughout the dance, he goes in and he interrupts that dance and he starts dancing with Jenna, right? So initially we had Jenna dancing with Austin. And we had John by himself. And when the dance is all over, Jenna is dancing with John. And Austin is by himself. Okay, this is an example of that single replacement reaction. Okay, so again, if we kind of look at our definition here, right, it was atoms of one element. Our element in this example is John, okay? Replace the atoms of a second element in a compound. John replaces Austin. He takes Austin's place. So I have a compound as my reactants and an element, and I have a different compound as my products, and a different element. Okay, now 
again, the thing that we want to kind of be careful that we don't have happen, okay, so we don't want this to happen. We don't want the end result to be John and Austin, okay? Um, we don't want to put two elements that are the same together in our compound. We always want our compounds to be made of a metal and a non-metal. So these reactions are going to involve ionic compounds. Okay, so what we see here is, again, we have two reactants, an element in a compound, and we have two products, an element in a compound. They're not the same. And the most common mistake people make with single replacement reactions is putting two elements that are the same together. So the thing about single replacement reactions is they don't always take place. The element that is by itself, okay, so the element that's an, actually an element as the reactant, has to be stronger than the similar type of element in the compound for that reaction to take place. So kind of when we talked about this, again, I said that I kind of picked and I said that I, for my purposes, John had to be stronger than Austin because John has to be able to kind of get in there during this dance and sort of, if you will, tear Jenna away from Austin. So John has to be stronger than Austin. With our chemical reactions, this element that is a reactant that is by itself has to be stronger than the same type of element in the compound, okay? So, um, again, what that means is and we're going to look at this in just a moment, okay, is that the element must be higher because we're talking about elements, right? We can't just kind of look and judge people, okay? So the element must be higher on the activity series. than the same type of element in the compound. So if we kind of go back to our dancing example, if John was not as strong. So if Austin was stronger than John, then John wouldn't have been able to dance with Jenna, okay? And we wouldn't have had a reaction take place. We wouldn't have had a change of bonds, okay? So the element must be higher on the activity series than the same type of element that is in the compound. So let's take a look at what that activity series is. So the activity series of metals is in your textbook. It's on page 217. It's table 8.2. The activity series of metals, okay, lists the metals in order. of decreasing reactivity. So that means that the strong elements are at the top.
and the weak elements. are at the bottom, and sometimes they're so weak they're not even on it, okay? So if ever you come across one where um, the element isn't even listed on the activity series of metals, that means that it's so weak that it doesn't even make the list, okay? What that means for us is, okay, that element that's alone as a reactant must be higher or stronger than the similar, and by similar, oops, spelled that wrong, and by similar I mean if our element is a metal, the similar element has to be a metal, in the compound. Okay, so again, if this element that's by itself is a metal, then I'm looking for the metal in the compound. If this element that's by itself is a non-metal, then my similar element in my compound is my non-metal. Again, we're going to see this when we look at an example. So uh, the activity series of metals lists the metals in order of decreasing reactivity. The strong elements are at the top of that list, and the weak elements are at the bottom. The element that's alone as an element on the reactant side must be higher or stronger than the similar element in the compound. And by similar, we mean if that element that's reacting is a metal, then it has to replace the metal in the compound. If that element that is reacting is a non-metal, it's going to replace the non-metal in the compound. So here is your activity series of metals. There is no need to memorize this. You'll see that it is in your outline. So you can fill that in using your textbook, that table um, 8.2 on page 217. Okay, so you see here it ha lists the activity series of metals. Um, it gives us the element name, it gives us the element symbol, it tells us react decreasing reactivity. So again, this idea here is that they are strong up here at the top and they are weak down here at the bottom, okay? So are strong to are weak. And we kind of see this little star, right, right here with this hydrogen. And again, that's kind of directing us down here to this idea that the metals from lithium to sodium, okay, so the metals from lithium to sodium will replace hydrogen from acids and water from magnesium to lead they will replace hydrogen from acids only, right? So this is an acid or water. Okay, this is an acid only. I don't think you're gonna see a whole lot of problems with that, but just be familiar with that. Okay, so this is our activity series of metals. And again, those elements that are by themselves have to be higher on this okay, than the element in the compound for the reaction to take place. There's also, this also 
reactivity corresponds with the halogen reactivity. Remember the halogens are group 17 or 7A. And right over here, I have right um, that portion of the periodic table for you. And these also, typically, if you have a non-metal um, replacing a non-metal, usually that's going to involve the halogens. And with the halogens, the reactivity decreases as you go down the group. Okay, so again, this idea is that they are strong here at the top and they are weak here at the bottom. Okay, so the idea is, is if I have bromine as an element trying to replace chlorine in a compound, that won't happen because bromine is not stronger than chlorine. If I have fluoride trying to take the place of iodine in a compound, that reaction will take place because fluorine is stronger than iodine. Okay, so halogen reactivity and activity series of metals, those are the two you need to be familiar with. So let's take a look at an example of a single replacement reaction. We're going to look at two examples, so do make sure in your space on your outline you leave, allow yourself to our space for two. Our first one is, our sentence is, magnesium reacts with silver nitrate. Now, you might notice that that seems to be a bit of an incomplete sentence because there's nothing about the products. That's on purpose because you have to be able to predict the products of these. So before we kind of start to write that word equation, let's take a look at this. Right, this is our element, which is magnesium. Magnesium is a metal. So magnesium in this compound is going to take the place of a metal. Is silver a metal or is nitrate a metal? You're right, silver is the metal. So when I start to write my word equation, silver and nitrate are going to swap partners, right? The new products are going to have silver by itself and magnesium as the product. Now, we should double check that magnesium is stronger than silver. So magnesium needs to be higher than silver and notice that it is. Okay, so our word equation for this one is going to be magnesium, remember reacts with becomes a plus, okay, silver nitrate, okay, here's our reaction, so here's our arrow. Now, magnesium and silver swap, so silver is going to be by itself, plus my other product that is going to have magnesium and nitrate, which is an ionic compound, so it's just magnesium, oops, nitrate. So now we're ready to take that word equation to a balanced chemical equation, okay? So our symbol for magnesium is Mg. And again, remember, we want to leave space in front of our formulas so we can put coefficients in to balance it. So there it's magnesium. We have silver nitrate next. Silver nitrate is a compound. It's an ionic compound because it's a metal and a non-metal, so we're going to do symbols, charges, crisscross, lowest whole number ratio. Our symbol for silver is Ag. 
It isn't a short column on our periodic table, so you use your helper sheet to figure out the charges plus one. Nitrate you have memorized as NO3, charge of negative one, so nothing to do to that one. Our products are silver, so that's AG, and our other product is magnesium nitrate. Magnesium nitrate is an ionic compound because it's a metal and a polyatomic ion. Mg, charge of plus 2, nitrate NO3, charge of negative 1, so I need parentheses, and a 2. Okay, so that's my skeleton equation. Now I need to, okay, write or to balance it. So I have one magnesium and I have one magnesium, so that looks okay. I have one silver and I have one silver, so that looks okay. Here I have one nitrate and here I have two nitrates. So I need a coefficient of two in front of silver nitrate, which means I need a coefficient of two in front of silver. I think I'm balanced, I'm gonna check it, okay? So one magnesium, one magnesium, two silver, two silver, two nitrates, two nitrates. This is a properly balanced chemical equation. Our second example, we're looking at the sentence magnesium reacts with lithium nitrate. Again, because it's a single replacement reaction and I haven't given you the products, we kind of need to think about magnesium. Again, we know magnesium is a metal and it's replacing the metal in lithium nitrate. The metal in lithium nitrate is the lithium part, right? So they're going to kind of try to swap partners, if you will. So again, we want to take a look at that activity series of metals, and we need to see that magnesium is higher than lithium. Well, it's not. So what do I want you to write for one like this? Let's um, kind of do our word equation first. So for our word equation, it is magnesium. reacts with is a plus lithium nitrate, and we already figured out that it doesn't take place. So we're going to write no reaction. Now, I still want you for ones like this to go ahead and do a, a equation, a skeleton equation. So for your skeleton equation, magnesium is still Mg. Plus, lithium nitrate is an ionic compound, so our symbol is Li, its charge is plus one, nitrate is NO3, it has a charge of negative one, so there's nothing to do. But what you're going to do for your products is you're going to write no reaction. That's how you tell me that you know that you needed, it was a single replacement reaction, that you needed to check the activity series of metals, and that magnesium is lower on the activity series of metals than magnesium, therefore this reaction cannot take place. So again, when you do some on homework or whatever, okay, your homework, you always, if it's a single replacement reaction that doesn't take place, you're still going to write your reactants as chemical formulas, but for your products, you're going to write no reaction. And you don't have any homework. Thank you. Talk to you tomorrow.